Hello and welcome to Lesson 9 of Database Design and Development for Computing Science National 5. Today we're looking at select queries using SQL. This is in the implementation subcategory in the course specification. These are the queries we're going to make eventually, and this is a pretty standard thing for a, for a teacher to hand out in class to give you a database with a list of queries that they want you to create. We're going to do the first four today to keep it short, and the other ones we'll do in subsequent videos. So previously we looked at this database. We've got dogs. These dogs are walked by certain walkers. And you can see that Stephen Dalton, for example, walks Blaze the dog. We've got other people like Drew Elvie who walks these four dogs. Beautiful. We can go to database tools. We can see the relationships between these tables. Beautiful. You may have noticed I've added an age column. This is just to help with uh, creating queries that relate to numbers. Last time we created a query design we went to SQL view and we deleted the semicolon. It's not necessary to delete it, but Microsoft Access allows you to. The only thing you need to know about the semicolon is that if you have one, it should always be at the very end of the query. It should never be in the middle. There are some database management systems that require a semicolon on the end. Microsoft Access doesn't require it, so I just delete it. Now, last time we selected the dog name from the dog table where the breed was equal to ch. Chihuahua. Spelling Chihuahua is quite difficult. When we run this, you'll see all of the Chihuahuas. Now, how can we be sure that these are the Chihuahuas? Well, we could go to the dog table and we could find that person, that dog's name and then double check that it is a Chihuahua, but that would take a ridiculously long time. So what we can do is we can go back to the query. We can add the breed in just now just to test it. And this will show us the breed. Right, these are all Chihuahuas. It appears to work. That's perfect. And then when we save the query, we'll save it without the breed because that's not what was asked. Another way to double check is to run the query, go to our table. If you're using Microsoft Access, this is really easy. We can go to the breed. We can get rid of all the breeds other than Chihuahua. Tick that one back on. And here we can see we've got all these Chihuahuas. We've got Mila, Amber, Norm, Violet. We've got Mila, Amber, Norm, Violet. And it ends with Aspen, Emma, Delilah. Aspen, Emma, Delilah. Perfect. Our query is fantastic. Now, a couple of things to mention about this SQL. First of all, these keywords, select, from, and where, these are, there are, are reserved keywords in SQL. They don't need to be uppercase. We can do them in lowercase, and it doesn't change the query. It's exactly the same. And the same goes for the anything that's in quotes or the names of fields. These can be mixed in case. We can do funny SpongeBob case. It doesn't matter. Um, as long as, and the same with this, we could do chihuahua, and this will still work. It is completely case insensitive. The only thing is, um, there is a bit of an agreed standard among database developers, and that is that keywords should be all caps, that field names should be lowercase, and anything that's in the in the quotation, sorry, just type it however you want. I mean, if, if chihuahua has a capital C, feel free to make it a capital C. But it's not case sensitive, so if you want, make it lowercase. Um, the, all I would say is, whatever you feel looks best, you go with it. Whatever you're used to, whatever you are familiar with, or whatever you are easy, whatever's easier to remember for you, okay? Now, the other thing I want to mention, the last thing just about general um, SQL standard practice, is that we have this query all on one line, but it is possible to, to make it multiple lines, and we can, well, what is standard practice is to put each keyword on its own new line. Here we are. So this, I would argue, is easier to read. We've increased readability because it's not one long query all on one line. We can see each uh, keyword, like what it's doing. We're selecting dog name, that's fine, from which tables, these ones, and what's the criteria, this is it here. Easier to read, especially when your criteria starts getting a bit longer. Instead of having it one massive long uh, criteria or multiple criteria on one line, you can separate it onto multiple lines, which is fantastic. And as you'll see, the query still works. It still works. Right, all that out of the way, let's talk about the queries we're going to make today. First of all, we want to show the names of all the dogs that are of breed Cairn Terrier. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to close this query. I don't want to save this query. I'm going to get rid of it, so I'm not even going to save it. I'll create a new one, query design, go to SQL. And I'm going to select all the things I need. So what is it asking for? The names of all dogs. Now this is the only thing it's asking me to show, the names of all dogs. It's not asking me to show the breed. So I'm only going to select the dog name. 
Uh, where do I get this information? This comes from the dog table, so from dog. And is there any criterion, any criteria that I need to, to match here? The breed needs to be Cairn Terrier. So this is almost identical to the previous uh, query, except instead of Chihuahua, it's Cairn Terrier. Let's see if it works. It does work, but is this the right answer? Uh, a couple of ways, again, that we could check this. We could double click on dog, filter by Cairn Terrier, and check Buster Sammy Alden ends with Heidi. We've got Buster Sammy Alden, blah, 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 ends with Heidi. Looks good to me. Um, another thing you could do, again, you could just put the breed in here just for testing and see that it is all Cairn Terriers. That looks fantastic. So now that I've confirmed my query is correct, I need to save it. One way to save is you could click on the save icon in the top left. This asks for a table name or a query name rather. Another way is to just try and close it. And when you try and close something that hasn't been saved, it asks you if you want to save it. So I'm going to say yes. I'm going to leave it as query one, but I'm going to add uh, Cairn Terrier Dogs. That'll do. This is my query over here. If you can't see your query on the left-hand side, what you can do is click on this arrow here and choose all access objects. Sometimes they're hidden because it's only showing a certain thing like tables. In this case, I want to show all access objects. You can see the tables and the queries. All right, let's move on to query two. Show the names of all dogs that are younger than 10 years old. Now we're dealing with numbers here, number comparisons. Let's create a query, go to SQL view, get rid of the semicolon. We want to show the names of dogs. So again, dog name from the dog table, where, and what do we want to find? Dogs that are younger than 10 years old. That'll be the age, the age field, and we want ones that are younger than 10. Now notice it's not younger, uh, it's not, sorry, younger than or equal to 10. So it's not less than or equal, it's just less than. Just like with programming. Sometimes you'll be given a hint as to whether it's less than or equal to 10. It will tell you in the, in the question, or it might include a word such as inclusive which we're away to look at next. But here we have dog names from the dog table where age is less than 10. Let's run it. And you'll see there are 554 results. Are we going to check all of these? I'm not. That would get very boring. But again, we could, we could go to SQL view and just include the age and see if we can find any that are older than 10 or 10 or older rather. None of them seem to breach the criteria. So let's, uh, let's just save it. Looks good to me. Try and close it, but say yes. Uh, instead of query one, we'll say query two, and dogs younger than 10. Perfect. Next query, show the forename and surname of all dog walkers. Now this is the different table. This is a different table. This is coming from the dog walker table, but it's not called dog walker. It's just called walker. And their names, the names of the dog walkers aren't just name. It's forename and surname, two separate fields. So let's create the query. Query design, SQL view. We need to include the forename and the surname. Typing's hard. Does it ask for anything else? Forename, surname of all dog walkers. So this is the only thing we're showing, so that's all I will show, of all dog walkers who have an ID between 40 and 100. In the walker table, is it called ID? It's called walker underscore ID. I suppose this is something I could mention here. Uh, so it's from, whoops, the walker table. One thing I should mention, uh, the, the field is called walker underscore ID, and this needs to be greater than or equal to 40, and capitals for this, because it's a keyword. It's not necessary, but I just like it. And the walker underscore ID should be less than or equal to 100. Um, you'll see that this works, and we get the results. We should get 61 results, because 40 to 100 is 60 no 61 numbers. There we go, good stuff. Um, but one thing I wanted to mention, this has an underscore in it, which is perfectly fine. Most fields in a database should either be all one word, or if it's multiple words, they'll normally have an underscore. There are some situations where you'll see a space. Now, you, you technically cannot have a space. Here, it's going to give us an error. You cannot have a space. So if there is a space in a field name, if it's Microsoft Access, you can put it in, whoops, put it inside square brackets. Square brackets. Now it is highly, oops, there is no field called walker ID, but if there was one, well, with a space, if there was one with a space, that's what you would do. In this case, there isn't one with a space, it's an underscore, so this'll work, this now works, but we don't need the square brackets because it doesn't have a space in it. Um, in an SQA assigned task, you should never ever see a space in a field name, but if you do get one, 
that is how you fix it. You put, a, put a square brackets around it. And that tells Microsoft Access that this is all one field. Ignore the space, just uh, take it as that's the field name. Right, so here, back to the query at hand. Um, we have used a complex query. This is where we have two comparisons. We're checking if the Walker ID is greater than or equal to 40, and it must be less than or equal to 100. This works. This is perfect. Just make sure that you include the, um, the field name again. And let's look at the last query. What are we looking at here? Show the names of all dogs that are of breed Pug or Poodle. Should be pretty straightforward. Let's create query design SQL, dog underscore name from the dog table where breed equals Pug or breed equals Poodle. Easy peasy, right? Of course it is. Now we could double check again, but I'll do my standard technique. I'll just include the breed just to test it. There we go, pugs and poodles, nothing else. Looks good to me. So there you have it, a very quick look at how to create some simple and some complex select queries. Nothing too complicated, we haven't done any sorting. It's all been from a single table each time. Um, nothing super complicated, but we are gonna move on to that next. Next time, we're gonna look at sorting. We're gonna sort things in different orders. So tune in for that one and I'll see you then.